today I will talk about the Liszt Fifole Etude and I will show you how to play the famous double notes that are so infamous and difficult. So I will tell you a little bit about how I do it and then what you can do and which exercises you can do that will help. So this is uh, something that I don't see a lot on YouTube. I didn't see a tutorial for this so I thought I should just uh, give some pointers at this. So basically the first thing you need to do is you need to get a feeling for 1, 4 and 2, 5 playing independently and that's kind of strange if you play if you play thirds etude or something like that it's a little bit of a different feeling than playing fifole uh, because the interval is larger and you can't really solve it so much with rotation uh, so people that think like maybe some people can somehow solve it with rotation i don't i do it purely from the finger so i will tell you now what my feeling is first you need to be super secure and safe with the one four and two five so only if you really feel like those fingers are always together then you can get a good fifthly i think if you have a little bit of instability for example then uh, the notes will not come together and that's a huge problem especially for this piece so the first thing i would do if um, if i had to teach someone is play slowly and really firmly Try to really feel every single one of those intervals. Really, uh, really play forte, you know, or even fortissimo if you like. And uh, really feel each of these intervals that you feel safe. Obviously, later we're not gonna play them forte anymore, but maybe for the slow tempo and beginning, you can play them loudly and really feel each of those intervals. Then the next thing I would do is an exercise that I've done for a long time, which is, first of all, you do, you do the bottom two legato and the top staccato. Etc. And then the second time you do top voice legato bottom staccato. Etc. like this and this really uh, creates an independence of both of bo both voices which I think is absolutely necessary and also uh, the next thing we're gonna do is practice those separately so what I like to do is just practice one two <laughs> Like this obviously you can tell I've done it for a long time but you can just do slowly okay and then the next thing is the four five etc voice separately and therefore you will also have the this you know uh, separation of the two but you're completely going to be independent down the middle so i think the fifole is better if you split it down the middle and think of these two and these two together at the same time rather than this and this at the same time so for me it's more like i think independently here and here rather than one four and then two five because that somehow doesn't work for me obviously everyone's different and things are going to work for you that don't work for me and things are gonna work for me that don't work for you etc the next thing is uh, what i like to call the leverage which is how close your arm should be to the to the keys so some people like to play fearfully like this and some people like to be more uh, tucked in i'm one of those people that like to be a little bit more tucked in for me that's the that's the leverage and that's what you need to find for yourself 
in uh, in your arm and, and your body is going to be different obviously so some people find the best leverage playing it distantly but i tend to be better if i bring my shoulder a bit closer into it you're going to feel a point where you feel it's like self-supported and uh, that's really like the sweet spot you need to find which is difficult obviously to find the sweet spot but just try it, bring your shoulder a bit closer, a bit further away, arm a bit more in, a bit more out, etc. until you find that sweet spot. Also, when you play it, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that you might want to rotate or shift your wrist a little bit like this. And then depending on where you are, you can also shift back. Depending on what feels best for you, you might uh, want to shift back and forth. Also, like the, you know, the first attitude. Also, you want to shift uh, this direction and then that direction. The fifth fully also is very useful if you shift with your wrist one way and then the other way. Uh, really, it's mostly about uh, because it's so unusual to play two notes in this interval together. I think that's where most of the difficulty comes from. So once you feel like the both these voices are super connected, you will play the Fifoli way better. And of course, that's also where kind of the tutorial ends because most of this is really just your feeling with the keys. But I will sum up again for you what you need to do in order to maximize your, your Fifoli potential, so to say. Uh, first of all, practice the voices separately. So top staccato, bottom staccato, uh, and so on. And then practice them also split down the middle, etc. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to shift accordingly and find the sweet spot with your shoulder, um, bring it a bit closer or a bit further away. Just uh, try things out and see where your sweet spot is. Then practice slowly, practice slowly, practice slowly. Slowly increase the tempo over time until you get to a point where it's comfortable. And yeah, practice also slow and uh, forte to get the connection of the two, uh, of the intervals basically. And then um, all I can say is well, the last thing I want to say is that uh, this etude doesn't have to be played that quickly. It's allegretto written. I know it's kind of a speed test for a lot of people, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, focus on the character and focus on the, you know, the shimmering lights, etc. of what the piece wants to portray, rather than how quickly you can play these, um, these intervals. Of course, it's very impressive, but focus on the color and the character. Uh, for example, you can listen to Chifra's recording, who plays it, I don't know, somewhere between 125 or 130. And it's purely, uh, really magical, I think, even though it's in a slow tempo. Uh, slow tempo is, of course, uh, compared to if you go to Kissin or, or some other people. But I think that's an absolutely fine tempo. And you should focus more on the character rather than uh, purely the speed. So I hope um, these tips um could help you a little bit and obviously i know it's a very difficult piece but just keep practicing and eventually you'll get there